Glory to Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, of ages, Amen. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, the Apostle Paul speaks to us about those who sow well, who reap a great harvest. Those who sow sparingly who reap a poor harvest. Not many people in our community, in our era, are busy sowing a field. Seeding time or sowing time is a great thing in the Canadian prairies where everyone has to work sometimes from the moment the sun breaks through until the sun disappears below the horizon. Sometimes 12, 14 hours a day. <coughs> sowing in a field <coughs> hoping to reap a harvest. But our Lord Jesus Christ is talking about a spiritual field. Not only those who would donate to the poor, but there are other seed which the gospel has given us, which our Lord Jesus Christ has given us, which we're called upon to sow in this world, to plant. And this is why in another parable he tells us that the sower went out to sow some of the seed fell in good ground, some fell upon a rock and some in hard ground. Some had a shallow root and died when the sun struck it. Some were carried away or eaten by the birds, especially those that fell upon the rocks. But we said during the time when that parable was read, <coughs> how we can pick the rocks up out of the field, move them aside, so that the seed will no longer fall upon the rocks. The stony hearts of so many people and sometimes including ourselves. But what else are we to sow? Does our Lord Jesus Christ not say in today's gospel? Be merciful as your Father is mercy. Merciful. <coughs> to sow mercy, to sow understanding, to sow compassion, all of these things. And to understand, as Paul says in his testimony about himself, <coughs> that the Lord has given me a thorn in my flesh to buffet me. But why is it that God seems sometimes to give us a thorn in the flesh? Except to keep us from becoming so puffed up and so arrogant and so proud of ourselves. To keep us from becoming full of judgment and condemnation of others we all have our own struggle. We all have our own issue, our own problem, our own form that buffets us. But some people choose to ignore that and to think much too highly of themselves, more highly than they should and more highly than they have any reason to think. We have, especially among clergy, but among lay people as well, some who think that they're the voice of God's judgment in this world. This is why we see so often among Christians on Sundays someone preaching in an angry, hateful manner, preaching fear and hatred and anger. because they're trying to cover up for the thorn in their own flesh and trying to pretend that they're above other humans and that they, instead of Jesus Christ, are the judge of the world. But we have plenty of our lay people who are exactly the same. We can separate ourselves from God, from Jesus Christ, through what we think are our virtues as quickly as we can through what we know are our sins. And believe me, there is a retribution coming when we depart from this world and on the day of the resurrection when our Lord Jesus Christ appears again. And what is the retribution except that those of us who judged and condemned will be judged and condemned. For our Lord Jesus Christ tells us that we will be judged by the same measure that we judge others. 
and that the condemnation we put on other people will come back upon our own heads. And we can be cast out into the outer darkness even if we're believers because we paid no attention to the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ. But does he not tell us today never to do to somebody else what we do not want them to do to us? And if we could only stop and actually think about that, when we begin to take an action or speak to another person, when we begin to preach a sermon, when we begin to teach, Some people think that you can correct other people by bullying them, by condemning them, by calling them names and cursing them and pushing them out. The same people who think that you should correct a child by beating them, that they should learn to obey you through fear rather than because they trust you. Brothers and sisters, that's no way to preach the gospel, and particularly in our era and our century. It may have worked with simple peasant folk, but it does not work with more sophisticated and educated people and those akin to the technologies of our age. We can preach the gospel by sowing many seed of the things that our Lord Jesus Christ told us to plant. If we have sufficiency in material things, then how should we not share those material things with those who do have genuine needs and who are genuinely without even the most basic necessities of life? But also to share the compassion that helps to heal a wounded soul, that helps to heal one who's downtrodden and crushed, those who are found in depression, those who are found in sorrow and grief, and yes, those whom we see in some kind of sin that is probably causing them a great deal of inner human suffering. We're here to heal, and every one of us, not just the clergy, but every one of us should try to be a spiritual healer, to see somebody in sorrow and grief and give them a hug, or give them a good word, or let them know that somebody cares about them. These are the seeds of the gospel that we're called upon to sow. Brothers and sisters, we could illumine the whole world if we would imitate Jesus Christ and not imitate those teachers of hate and malice those angry people who rage and rave from the stage. The world can be healed only by co-suffering love, only by complete unselfish love. Nothing else will work. Nothing else will do. Fear does not work. It has no value. Anger will not work. It has no value. All it does is stress us out and give us heart problems. So sparingly of the grace that God has given you and you'll reap a very small harvest. But of the grace that God has bestowed upon us and above all as our Lord Jesus Christ said in the gospel today the mercy that he shed upon us. So these things broadly across everyone that you meet, everyone that you come in contact with. And a great harvest will come of it. We all are responsible for the gospel. We cannot say it's the priest's duty or the bishop's duty. Every one of us is called to be an apostle. Every one of us is called to teach through the quality of our lives and not through words spoken. But again, when we see someone in grief, in despair, someone cast down, someone fallen in a passion, have we not been told by the wisdom 
but a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pitchers of silver. Sometimes only a simple kind word, only a simple touching the other person can heal so much, can lift a person up from darkness. Let's resolve, brothers and sisters, to be spiritual healers in this world. And as we reach out to other people, we'll find that we're also healing ourselves, healing the darkness that is within us, healing the sorrow and the grief that is within us, healing the passions that torment all of us. Because we followed the example of Jesus Christ. And we've been merciful as our Father is merciful. Amen.